people will ask this question, like, well, if Jesus chose who's going to be saved before the foundation of the world, why should we preach the gospel to anyone? Like, why even bother evangelizing? Well, the answer is pretty simple. If you believe in God's sovereignty and His authority to select whom He will and won't save, then you also better recognize His authority when He commands you to go out into the highways and byways and preach the gospel to anyone so that they can be saved. The same God who ordains who will be saved also ordains the means by which they'll be saved. In fact, it's very encouraging. So he tells us that the Holy Spirit is already doing the heavy lifting. It's already doing the hard, or He's already doing the hard work. He doesn't tell us, go out, find a field, clear it out, till it, uh, plant the seeds, cultivate the soil, water it, clear out the weeds, and all that stuff. He makes it pretty easy. He says, just go out and gather the harvest. He's basically saying, go get your basket, go over to Stiers or Snipes, and just pick the fruit that's already on the tree. It's ready to go. It's ripe. It's like fishing in a stocked pond. We are guaranteed success. The most we can mimic the shepherd's voice and accurately portray what he has to say, then we're guaranteed his sheep will hear and they will come. Which just shows how incredibly lazy we are. God guarantees us success in evangelism. Yet we don't bother because either it's too much work, uh, we don't want to look stupid, or heaven forbid, the worst thing you can do as America, we don't want to look judgmental or like, oh, be offensive to anyone. So let me put it another way. I'll get away from the theological stuff and I'll go personal. I'll talk about me. Um, when I look at my own life, not only what a knucklehead I was, but I currently still am and how much I still stumble and, and just do stupid things. Uh, and that he chose me out of a life of self-destruction to be not only his servant, which I would be content with that, to be servant in the house of the Lord, I'm okay with that, but he goes beyond that, adopts me as a son, I'm absolutely blown away with how fortunate, how lucky I am. Uh, I don't understand it. I can't explain it. I'm just in awe of it. I then move from that concept of like absolute gratitude of my blessing, and I look at other people who on the surface appear to be a lot better than me. They're kinder, more fun to be around, uh, more loving. They just seem on the surface to be better than me. It would certainly be a better choice. And I know despite how smooth life seems for them right now, I know that they're blindly walking towards hell. And I'm kind of overwhelmed with compassion and empathy, and like a lot of the prophets in Scripture, I kind of turn to God and I question it. And I challenge Him, and I say, like, how is this possibly fair? Like, how can I get to go to heaven, but these people, whom I love, are damned, and they don't even seem to know it? Then the answer comes back, and it's sharper than any double-edged sword. God makes it real clear. He just says, ain't dead yet. You still have time. In fact, I believe I commanded you to go and tell them the gospel. To tell them the good news. And then you dare accuse me of injustice? When I told you, I would assure you of success? And then you don't bother just because you feel awkward. Uh, you don't love those people. You don't love them one lick. You don't care about their destiny. You're only expressing guilt, which is walling up inside of you because of your own apathy and want to project it on them. 